In this lesson, we're going to look at some more elements for house music. Now, a lot of the tracks that I've been listening to have these arpeggiated synths, and they're really quite nice. And if used well, they can really add that level of depth to your actual piece. Now, what I've been hearing is you've got these string parts, which we covered a few lessons back, and the the actual synth that arpeggiates kind of works entwined with that, which is really quite a nice effect. Now, let me just show you what I've done here, and it's really, really ridiculously simple. Um, I've come down here and I've just inputted the root note of each chord, and I've let the arpeggiator do itself. Now, if it's a root note, and I just play this on my keyboard so you can hear it, the root note sounds very subtle. Let's go up an octave higher. Very, very subtle. You can make it a bit more lavish and not so subtle by playing the whole chord. Now, this is just the chord of C major. Okay, I for my piece, I just wanted to use an individual note and let the arpeggiator bounce around just a single note rather than trying to build these massive chords. Okay, so that's all I've done is I've just used the root note of each chord as I work through. I'm only going to put this in at the end part. So from development three, development four, and then when we get to this crossover and into the outro, that's all I'm going to use it for. And it is meant to kind of build on this string section. Now, how this is built up is you've got your ES2 synth, and I'm just using this 80s poly synth, and this comes pre-built with this arpeggiator in it, okay? So when you come to the arpeggiator, you've got a few different configurations that you can use. This one is just using the upward pattern. You can use a downward pattern, an up and downward pattern, some other kind of configuration, or you can actually step input it yourself. It's, it's quite a fantastic little thing that you can do. And you can add the arpeggiator to any of your MIDI synths or your virtual synths, okay? So it's worth having a little experiment around with, with what this does and how to use it. It's fairly simple, um, but so powerful. So this one is the default. I haven't changed anything there. I have added an auto filter. That's why my panning is at the beginning, just sorry, in the center. And I've also brought the level down because it's quite, I, I want it to blend with the actual string section that I've got. I've also added a bit of flange as well. Everything else came pre-built. So here it is with just the strings to show you how that section builds itself up. And it's almost like they're trying to be one part, which is fantastic, okay? Um, and it adds that kind of modulation effect to it as well. And it's meant to be very, very subtle, okay? You can have it quite lavish, depending on your piece. For mine, I just wanted it very, very subtle. Have a listen to this, this end part and just see what you reckon. So I'll play the whole thing all together. <laughs> So I think you'll agree that it just kind of adds that, that little element of modulation where that movement kind of happens. Um, that's pretty much all I have to say about that particular track. It was worth doing just to thicken out that section. You can hear that the last part of my arrangement now is just sounding so big. And it's also another thing that you can write about in reflection to your house track and how you've built up the elements of house using the arpeggiator. Um, so that's all I've got to say. I've got one more track that I want to put in which we'll do in the next lesson and then we're going to start looking at the mixing of this so get your second synth in get your first synth in and any other synth you want to put in and i'll meet you in the the next lesson <laughs> 